So, hello and assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you, this is Muslim way of saying hello. Um, and so this program is about Christianity and finding out who Jesus really was and what he really taught. Uh, why are Muslims like us talking about Jesus? It's because we believe that uh, God has sent many prophets throughout the years, even to the Aborigines, to the Israelites and to the rest of the world as Prophet Muhammad was prophet to the whole of humanity um, and so we're interested in all prophets of God including Jesus and if we were to follow uh, if Christians were to follow G who Jesus really was and his real teaching uh, they would be much better off and as Muslims we're interested in helping humanity in whatever which way we can I'd like to introduce myself again my name is Carlin I think you presented this program and I'm with my friend Mr. Nassim Bajra Sahib, uh, who is a imam in the biggest mosque in Western Europe. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, so uh, let's get started with our second topic. This is a live question and answer, so feel free to ask questions or even make comments on the topic. And the topic at the moment for the next half hour is uh, Was Jesus a Jew or a Christian? And a lot of people know the answer to this question but this we're just trying to open up the uh, topic for discussion and learn something possibly that we might not have known before so was Jesus a Jew or a Christian? <coughs> he was a Christian Jew I see, okay, <laughs> I didn't expect that answer okay. <laughs> because <coughs> if we say he was Jew <coughs> it means that he uh, is one of those people who rejected Jesus because generally when we use the word Jew we mean that those who rejected Jesus Christ and ultimately they put him on the cross mm -hmm. or they were the responsible for. But there were some Jews who did accept him. So, but there were some Jews who accepted Jesus Christ and they were called Christians. Okay. <laughs> See? To, to, to just to differentiate them from other Jews who, did, who rejected. But they were later called Christians. Did they, did they no, call no, themselves Christians? No, what I mean, that whether they were called in, the, in, that, in that way or not, they had to differentiate them, that, okay. which, that we are different from other Jews. Right. You see, they had to say something, that uh, we are those Jews who have accepted Jesus Christ. So, automatically people will call him, even if they don't call themselves, people will say that these are the followers of Christ. Right. So this why this this is what it means Christian. Sure. So this is why I I say that he was uh, Christian Jew. In other words, he accepted the scriptures as well because which is the base of Judaism. So anybody who accepts the authority of the Old Testament, we cannot say that he is not a Jew. Because this is what Judaism means. Mm. Although there are many definitions of the the word Judaism, but generally speaking, as far as religion goes. A, p a Jew is a person or a follower of Judaism is that person who f accepts the authority of the Old Testament which was revealed according to uh, the Jews which was revealed, which are, uh, revealed to Moses or at least you know the laws were revealed, revealed to Moses and then they were compiled later on. <coughs> so, so because Jesus accepted the authority of the Jew, uh, ex uh, Old Testament this is why we can see he was a Jew. Now, let us find out is it true that he accepted the authority or not? So, we find very clearly in the uh, uh, Gospels, for example, in uh, one place, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5 verse 17, it is mentioned, I have not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. So, referring to the Old Testament, he is saying that I have not come to destroy this law. That means that he is accepting the authority. <coughs> then. It's also uh, said that when he was born, he he was born in a Jewish family. Mary, Mary was uh, from among the Jew, uh, Jews, and uh, he was circumcised as well. You know, Jesus was circumcised, mm -hmm. and also you know a celebration uh, of uh, like you know we had to do the akika. So in that say way, they they also celebrated the birth of Jesus Christ. They named him on that day. This was the tradition of the Jews that on the eighth, eighth day they used to uh, do the circumcision mm -hmm. and uh, then also they used to have some, some kind of celebration as well. Right. So, it was done 
in the case of Jesus Christ and that's mentioned in the book of Luke chapter 2 verse 21 to 25. Right. <coughs> now another place uh, we find that uh, uh, it's in, again mentioned in Matthew chapter 3 verse 1 to 16 that when Jesus uh, you know grew up uh, so in his youth he uh, took he was baptized uh, by John the Baptist so you know this so that means that he accepted the, the authority of the religion of Judaism because John according to all the Jews he was also one of the Jewish prophets mm. the son of Zechariah Zechariah was also a Jewish you know prophet mm. so if he accepted Judaism through John the Baptist so that means Jesus was also one of the followers of John mm. right so when Jesus, John passed away some say he was he was martyred some say he died whatever happened so after that Jesus also started that uh, his ministry so that shows that he was following the um, Jewish law mm. then another thing Jesus had said as well as his own um, uh, you know ministry is concerned he has said I have not come but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel and that, that's mentioned in the book of Matthew chapter 15 verse 24 so that makes him even less a Christian in the usual sense because he he, uh, he was very much keeping to the Jewish faith talking to the Jews and not really starting a new faith you see not starting the new faith but at the same time his uh, uh, interpretation of the law is different from other Jews and this is why he was opposed mm -hmm. so there were about 72 sects at the time of uh, Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and uh, <coughs> they rejected him and Jesus made his own uh, you know uh, sort of uh, sect you can say and the disciples are those people who were early Christians are follower of Jesus Christ. Okay. If if Christian means follower of Jesus Christ, then of course those are early uh, disciples. They were the member of his community. Mm. So so and Jesus himself is also one of them. So he belongs to that Christian sort of sect you can call or group, which later later on grew, mm. and slowly slowly the number of uh, you know followers of Jesus was increasing, and the number of uh, the uh, his opponent decreased mm. and now we can see in the whole world that the Jews are maybe 10 million or so around that number mm. because about there uh, uh, once I was reading somewhere that uh, in Palestine 4 million Jews came from 70 different countries you see <coughs> and they all belong to different uh, traditions now, they are not all all following one explanation of the uh, Ju Judaism mm. everybody has a different views so word 70 is even uh, mentioned in the present day literature in fact I was reading uh, encyclopedia of uh, uh, word religion right. in that it was mentioned that these Jews who are living in Palestine now nowadays they have come from 70 different countries and having different you know uh, uh, traditions <coughs> So, what I mean that uh, at the time of Jesus Christ also there were many sects and uh, you know when a religion is split into many sects that itself is, is a proof that now they are not on the right path mm. because if because right path can be only one and when you divide that uh, you know religion into so many sects having different views opposing views you know if for example the, you have one leader mm. and then one leader uh, divides your people for the purpose of organization that is a different thing okay. but at, because they are all under one uh, leadership. There is clearly something wrong when yeah. everybody is disagreeing with each but, other. But when they have yeah. different I mean, opposing views yeah. then of, of course they are not on the right path so then yeah. they need somebody to, to guide them. To and if there is a real God who yeah. still communicates with humanity yeah. why would he be quiet, quiet that's right. when there is so much trouble and confusion? That's right. And this is why Jesus was sent. Okay. So those who accepted him, they were called Christians. So the point of this topic is not really just to uncover this fact that Jesus was in fact 
Jewish, but you can call him Christian just by name, just simply differentiate. But in, in essence, he was a Jew. And a lot of people know that already. Every, a lot of Christians know that already. So the point was to open up this discussion. Um, why, why is there this other religion called Christianity? Why do they not call themselves Jews? Or at least consider themselves Jews first and Christians uh, as like a, uh, a correct following or understanding of Judaism. Yes, you see, yes, one benefit of this, this discussion is that nowadays Christians think that uh, <coughs> Jesus, uh, the purpose of the coming of Jesus was that uh, the Christians should be left free from following the Old Testament or the laws of the Old Testament. Mm. This is why you see, <coughs> uh, in fact, they have taken this idea from St. Paul. Yes. He said that uh, the law is curse. Law, law is curse. Law itself is a curse. Right. So this is why they say that Jesus came uh, to uh, save us from the curse of the law. Now, although if we want to interpret this uh, uh, this phrase in a way in the right way, we can say that he may mean that the interpretation of the law which is made by the Jewish scholar of that time. That was a curse. But this is what St. Paul said. Did Jesus ever say that the law was a curse? No, no, no but this is what I am now explaining. Right. I am trying to explain that definitely Jesus also said that the explanation of the law, the interpretation of the law which was made by the Jewish scholars of that time, that was a curse. Right, okay. And this is why God sent Jesus Christ. So, so what did Jesus actually say regarding the law? He said that no, it was a curse. No, no. What he said, I have not come to destroy the law, but to fill, fulfill it. Right. So, so he didn't say it was a no, curse. No, no. He didn't say that. Only St. Paul. St. Paul said it. Who said that many years after, after uh, the biblical stories no, of but Jew, Jesus in Judea. Uh, many years after that. No, but what, 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 I, what I am saying, yeah. that why can't we interpret this uh, phrase of uh, St. Paul, Saint Paul. Okay. in a nice manner? So that it fit with, Jesus, with the statement of Jesus Christ as well. well so we because the problem is in reality, how do most Christians consider that statement by St. Paul? No, no. Is to reject the law. No, but but uh, but if they say, say that, yes. then it means they will be going against the statement of Jesus. Right. Because Jesus is saying that I have not come to destroy the law, yes. so, and he's following the uh, uh, Christian, you know, uh, the Old Testament, and also he's asking his uh, own followers that you should follow uh, the commandments mentioned in the lo uh, law of Moses. For example, I give you the reference, another, other reference. Uh, in Matthew chapter 19 verse 17, it is said that if thou, Je Jesus is addressing the Christians, his followers, he is saying, if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. That if you want the real life, right. then you must keep the commandments, that means you should follow the commandments and he was referring to, to the commandments of the law of Moses. Mm. So, if uh, <coughs> the if we will accept the statement of uh, Saint Paul, uh, literally, as it seems that you know he is saying the law is a curse, that will be against the statement of Jesus Christ. Right. So, this is why I would say that if you have to accept the statement of Saint Paul, you can only accept it in this way that what Jesus, uh, what he was saying that the interpretation of the law made by the Jews, Jewish scholars who, who rejected Jesus Christ, that was a curse. Mm. And now Jesus came to give them the right interpretation, right. the but correct that interpretation. That would be a very kind interpretation of what St. Paul said. And I think kindness is a good thing. Okay, <laughs> sure. Okay. But maybe even unrealistic because very few people mm very few Christians hmm. actually take that interpretation. But if they don't take, say yes. let's say, let's, then, let's say the other Then they will be rejecting Jesus. Is that they will be, this is what I am saying, that if they, right. if they will not accept this interpretation, then they will be, that, you know, then the other, only other option is, yeah. then they should say that they have to accept either St. Paul yeah. or Jesus Christ. And in fact, this <laughs> so is not a new idea. In fact, <laughs> scholars of the Bible, hmm. 
uh, one of uh, one of the scholars, Mashu, was telling me that he goes to a theological college where they study the Bible. Mm-hmm. The scholars call Christianity Pauline, Paulinism, mm. i.e. follows the religion of St. Paul rather than the religion of Jesus. So they should, so Christians should be aware yeah. that if they, what they are really following, if they are rejecting the Old Testament, which mm. is very much like Islam, mm. uh, if they are rejecting the Old Testament, they are in fact not following Jesus, they are following St. Paul. Yes, if, if they the words of uh, St. Paul literally, yeah. then of course they will be rejecting Jesus Christ. And then they are not following Jesus Christ. Then they are can they in fact they should not call themselves Christian in fact. And I and and I think you can well understand that no Christian would like to say this, mm. that I don't believe in Jesus, or, or I, I don't only I only believe in Saint Paul and not in Jesus. Sure. No, he will not yeah. say that. So this is why I am saying that whatever interpretation we make, it must just be according to the interpretation of Jesus, okay. because he is the main authority. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just want to repeat because these are one of the early shows mm-hmm. that this is actually supposed to be a question and answer program. It's a live question and answer program. If you see this later on YouTube, you should be aware of that and please log in. Uh, go to whyalovisfarm.org, which you will see on the comment section, so in the description section of the YouTube video. Um, and you can find out from there if you want to ask your questions, if you really want to know more, you can ask your questions in the live program which happens every month. Um, the other thing I think we should keep repeating every now and then is who we are and why we're so interested in the particular topics. So, in short, and you can give more detail, we are actually followers of the second coming of Jesus, which uh, Christians all over the world are actually waiting for. And in the same way uh, the Jews rejected <coughs> Jesus because they didn't expect uh, they didn't expect a a humble person, a humble prophet of God, as all prophets are, uh, to lead them uh, away from the false un- un- understanding of Ju- Judaism. The same way Christians are expecting somebody to float down from the sky and say, uh, now Christians will rule the world, and we are going to be the bosses, and God never worked like that. So maybe, uh, and so we, uh, the person who actually became uh, was a uh, the second coming of Jesus was a, a humble person in the name of Mirza of Allah, and maybe you would like to give more detail. Right. You see, I would like to give some background uh, that why we are interested in Jesus Christ and the second coming of Jesus Christ, yeah. that when we take all religion together, particularly Ju- Judaism, Christianity and Islam, we find that they are very close to each other, because Judaism starts with the Abraham. Right. In fact, one of the meaning of Jew is the descendant of, of Abraham. This is also written in, in these uh, some books. Right. So, if this is the meaning of descendant of Abraham, then in fact all Muslims are li- also mm-hmm. like that. Because Prophet Abraham had two sons, like uh, one was Ishmael, the other was Isaac. Now, all these uh, Jew- uh, Jewish prophets, they are from the line of Isaac and f- Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is from the progeny of uh, Ishmael. So, in fact, both are come from uh, Prophet Abraham. <coughs> now, after Moses, you see, or let me say that first of all, Je- Moses himself said that after him a prophet will come who will be like him. Yeah. That is in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 18. Yeah. He said that I will <coughs> um, uh, raise up a prophet from among the brethren like unto you. Yeah. So, now like unto you means like unto Moses and Moses was a law bearing prophet. Yes. Among all other prophets, mm. this is the distinction of Moses that he is a law bearing. Yeah. So, this prophecy meant that a law giving prophet will come after Moses and now who is that? None but Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. This is why a, a Christian who believes in the Old Testament, he must believe in, Jesus, in Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him as well. <coughs> and now then, after Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, Jesus Christ came and uh, sorry, Je- uh, after Moses, Jesus came <coughs> for nearly 1400 years yes. and many prophets in between. And, and many prophets in between. Yeah. <coughs> now, in the same way, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was told that uh, in his uh, followers, there will be a Messiah like Jesus Christ. And on the other hand, we see that Jesus also said that he will come again. All the Christians believe in that. 
so this prophecy about this coming of jesus christ is found in both Judah, uh, in christianity as well as in islam now the thing is <coughs> that what are the signs for that so in the <coughs> uh, bible <coughs> we have very clear signs in this regard <coughs> for example <coughs> it is stated jesus said for as the lightning comes to comes uh, uh, out of east and shines even unto the west so shall also the coming of the son of man be matthew chapter 24 verse 27 so that means the second coming of jesus will be from the east mm. that's one thing that we must understand remember second thing he said that eclipse uh, uh, jesus said immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened sun his as you and sun yes sun be darkened and moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and power of the heavens will be shaken that's in matthew chapter 24 verse 29 hmm. then some other signs it is said that uh, jesus said unto them i mean to his uh, disciples nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against the kingdom and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven in that's in chapter uh, in luke chapter 20 verse uh, 21 verse 10 to 11 now take all these things together that this second coming of jesus is going to take place from the east <coughs> and it is said that then the light of jesus which will appear in the east that will come in the west as well mm. so from east to west <coughs> uh, then it is said that this, the eclipses of the sun and the moon will take, will take place in his uh, uh, at his time so these are big two signs yeah. now these signs are mentioned pro by prophet muhammad peace be upon him as well yeah. now this here you see christianity and islam becomes together yeah. jesus is also saying that there will be sun and moon uh, eclipse about at his second coming of jesus and prophet muhammad is also saying the same thing sallallahu alaihi wasallam peace be upon him now the 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 only thing is that prophet muhammad peace be upon him was given a little bit more detail he was told that this, these eclipses will take place uh, after that the Messiah has come, Imam Mahdi has come and <coughs> it will, these eclipses will be in the month of Ramadan. The sun uh, will be eclipsed in the month, uh, Ramazan Ramadan, is month of fasting. Most, yeah, lost, lost Many lost people people know, it's, yeah. it's just a month according to his month. That's right. And it is said that both eclipses will take place in the same month of Ramadan. Another thing it was, he was told that ec these, uh, the moon will be eclipsed on the first night of its, its uh, fixed days of eclipses and that is 2013th and the sun will be eclipsed on the middle day of the fixed days of eclipses and that is 28th so the dates are mentioned the month is mentioned and also that there, should, there will be a um, uh, clement yes. and it is prophet muhammad peace be upon him also said that it has never happened before until that messiah come that imam Badi come this these signs will never appear Yes, it's never happened as a sign. As a sign for a claimant. Yes, that's right. So it has never happened that a claimant make a claim and yes. then these signs appear. Yeah. Yeah. And the great thing about uh, this particular sign is uh, the eclipse of the sun and moon. You can check it out from the computer. That's right. Which, you can, which is calculated. <coughs> yeah. Now what happened that Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiyani, the founder of the Amdiya community, he claimed to be the Prime Minister and Imam Mahdi in 1891. Right? And he wrote a book. Uh, under the title of Victory of Islam, Fatah Islam. Yeah. Now, three years later, in 1894, in the month of Ramadan, exactly on those days which was foretold by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the both signs uh, of eclipse and of the moon and the sun took place. Yeah. <coughs> now, that means that the prophecy of uh, Jesus Christ himself mentioned in the book of Matthew. Yeah and prophecy of prophet muhammad peace be upon him mentioned in the book of dar kutni yeah. they are fulfilled in the pers in the person of hazrat mirza ghulam muhammad afkadi right. so we we've, we've gone slightly off track but i think it's important to every now and then repeat this <coughs> and maybe we'll have a, a program just on this topic of the evidence of who was the second coming of jesus and anybody who's a truly a christian will be absolutely interested in this 
And those who are not interested, you can ref- they can reflect on themselves and think, okay, maybe we are not true Christians if we are not interested. In so you see, we are, we are uh, mentioning it for one another reason is that um, but in these days they are celebrating Christmas, for example. Yes. So it means that they are uh, thinking about Jesus Christ and they should think about Jesus Christ. Yes. Now, if they are thinking about Jesus Christ, they should also think about his prophecies as well. Yes. What prophecies he made about the latter days, about yes. our days. Yes. Otherwise, what's the purpose of uh, celebrating Christmas? Okay. If, if they are remembering Jesus Christ in yes. these days, th- so they should remember the, his prophecies as well. Yes. So now, when, when, to the church, and, especially yeah. once so when, they, they, when they will go to the prof- prophecies, yeah. then there they, they will find this prophecy as well that he said he will come again. And then they will also find that in the world today, already there is a man who has claimed and he has been accepted as the second coming of Jesus yes. <coughs> by over 170 million people who are living in 202 countries. Mm-hmm. So, is it not the duty of the tr- true Christians who believe in, in, the, uh, in the teaching of Jesus Christ and in the prophecies of Jesus Christ, it is, not their, is this not their duty that they should also find out about it? Okay, uh, and just to finalize, <coughs> there was something that we have missed out. Uh, people be wondering what happened between Jesus uh, and we say 300 years after Jesus Christi- uh, this idea of Christmas began. What happened in between? Who, where did his followers disappear, and do, did they? Uh, who you know? What hap- you know? To <coughs> his successors, mm-hmm. and what happened to true Christianity? You see, uh, as, as you know, that uh, when Jesus was put on the cross, <coughs> at that time it was a very difficult time for all the disciples. There were only twelve tribal, uh, basically some uh, these uh, disciples, and uh, again one of them left him, and other also were frightened. <coughs> so, as Jesus told them that you should go in the world and spread uh, the word wherever you can. So, these people did go to in different parts of the world uh, and uh, old Christians know that it is written in the, uh, uh, for example, in the Encyclopedia of Britannica that uh, Thomas went to India mm. and his tomb is also in India. Mm. So, Jesus also went to Kashmir. Yeah. Uh, because the <coughs> Kashmiri people are from among the lost uh, sheep of the house of Israel. As, as Jesus said that I have not come but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yeah. This is why he went to Kashmir as well. And uh, so now the presence of the tomb of Jesus in India, yeah. that indicates something yeah. that there, is a, there are some connection of Christianity, yeah. early Christianity sure. with uh, we're, we're with India. Just trying to uh, <coughs> wrap up a few ideas because we're in the last minute of the program, right, right. and uh, uh, we should be aware that there were there was a successor to um, if I mis- I'm not sure if I've understood properly. Was it James, who uh, no. was his brother, who was his successor? But you know, generally, it, Peter and Peter is considered to be right, okay. uh, you know his uh, uh, successor. Sure. But okay. anyhow, it, it always happens uh, that uh, these people didn't agree with Saint Paul. Yes, no, never. In fact, Jesus, as far as St. Paul is concerned, all Christians know that he was opposed to Peter and all other disciples. Right. And in fact, in the, during the lifetime of Jesus, he was one of the bitterest enemies. Right. It was after Jesus uh, uh, you know, went away, uh, th- then he said that he has seen some dream and then now he has, born, he has become Christian. And he, he started his own preaching separately, sure. not with, uh, in the company of the uh, disciples of Jesus. Okay, so we've done a half an hour mm-hmm. and uh, we hope in future programs next month you will come and ask <coughs> your questions if you're in search for the truth. So thank you very much, Vajra Sahib. Uh, and we'll end the program there. Thank you very much. Okay, Bye. thank you very much. Zakla.